I'm excited to be here. A lot of drama has happened, but God is good. So let's go. Anybody ready to see what the uh, you will focus, focus. <laughs> Anybody ready to see what the uh, promises, ready to learn how to see what it's going to be very practical. Um, I need someone to drop the link of how to get uh, <laughs> I need someone to get a link on how to get promise from the church website so that in case you, you don't have a promise, so we can make this very practical because at some point we're going to be doing, um, yes, our God, we're going to be doing activation. So it's going to be an amazing time. Okay, so I'm going to share my slides now and then we'll get started. If you're ready, I want you to put in the chat box, ready, ready, or good to go. Ready, ready, or go see the fresh guy. Come on now. Welcome, sir. Hi. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so if you're ready and good to go, put ready or good to go. Amen. All right, let's do this. Okay, so let me know if you can see my slide. Sorry, I didn't have time to do my gizmos and all of those things. <laughs> As much. All right, so we're going to be looking at stewarding and processing your promises, um, whatever the Lord has given to you. I'm going to take you through a journey. Can you hear me clearly? Are we good? Can you hear me clearly? So we're going to be going on a journey together. We're going to be looking at um, 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 how to do this, okay? So let's just jump right into it. Um, the first thing you must learn about stewarding your promises, stewarding your prophecies. This can work for prophecies and promises. Is this Joshua 1 verse 8. It says, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you might be careful to do everything in it, then you'll be prosperous and successful. So there is a call to, you know what, partner with God to put this on your lips. I love the way um, and I put it. Put it on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, okay? Put it on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. And that is how you're going to have good success. So that you might be careful to do everything within it. So meaning that, number one, if you don't keep it on your lips, if you don't have a routine, day and night represent routine. Um, so I, I want the co-host to please pull up, be on the lookout so that in case any mic, the mic or people's mic are, you know, great. Um, so we can help me. Thank you so much, guys. All right, okay, okay. I can make somebody else co-host as well. So it's not just you. Well done. All right. So the first uh, thing. Okay. The first thing is. Um, Joshua 1, 8, keep the book on your lips, meditate on it day and night. That talks about routine. So you might be careful to do everything written in it. So it's possible not to do what is written in the book if you don't have a routine, if you don't keep it on your lips. And that is what to guarantee prosper, prosperous and to be successful. You know, other translations will say good success. Now, the next thing is faith comments. I'm giving you some ground rules and um, principles on how to steward or process. And you know, this, you said, what's the difference? I'll show you in a bit. Faith comments. So Romans 10, 17 says, so then by then faith comment by hearing and hearing by the word of God, not the word of men, but the word of God. A lot of people are wondering, oh, how, how my faith is low. I realize that the devil to knock you out is to get you out of the word. There is no way your faith will increase or grow if you're not exposing yourself, your spirit man, even when you don't feel like. I feel like we have a lot of advantage advantages in this our generation because of audio bible soak yourself in it i realize that even when i'm you know experiencing some things all i need to do just keeping setting routines in a couple of days i've seen my spirit excited jumpy you know when i'm not feeling that thing in my so i know that man that's my check my check engine signal all right so faith comment so the first thing is meditate the next thing is faith comment the next thing again is um it's still faith comments. I love the TPT. It says faith then is birth is birthed in a heart that responds to God's anointed entrances of the anointed one. Meaning your heart responds to God's word, and you keep exposing yourself to God's word. So your thoughts. The next thing is we've talked about meditation. We've talked about faith comments. Uh, your thoughts. So you need to get the promise and the word in your thoughts. All right, Paul. Um, um, sorry, this is uh, Philippians 4. It says, keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real, honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectful, 
pure and holy, merciful and kind, and fasting your, your, your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him always, put into practice the example of all that you have heard from me or seen in my life, and the God of peace will be with you in all things. Look at the things he's saying. You must, whatever is pure, whatever things are honorable, admirable, think on these things. Also, as a certified therapist, what I know is that you can create thoughts. You can create a thought pattern. You can, you can negate a thought by saying, I don't want to think about you again. Stop, stop, stop. You, you are able to counter a negative thought or whatever by creating another thought. The mind is so powerful. That's why Ephesians 3 trying to say above all you can ever ask, ask, think, or imagine. Imagination is a powerful tool in the hand of God. If you allow it, use it, purify your imagination. If you don't purify your imagination, it becomes fantasy. And fantasies can be very dangerous. Okay, but imagination are useful. Okay, so that's one of the, the third thing is let's take a lesson from Paul, your thoughts. Okay, so now let's go back. What are the four things I've said about, or three things I've said, I think there are four or three, about processing as steward? What are the ground rules? Number one, meditate. Somebody give me something else. Number two is what? Number one is meditate. What's the second one you picked from what I said? Let me see if you're here with me. Number one is to meditate. Number two, your thoughts. Okay, anybody? Faith comment. Okay, somebody else? Faith comment. Okay, all right. So the only way, well done, guys. I want us to be in together. Okay, the only way you're going to steward your promises or your prophecies is to ensure you even create a routine around it, is to meditate. That comes with meditation. To in, in, make sure you imbibe it in your thoughts, you, you entrench it in your thoughts, you put it right into your thoughts, create a thought pattern with it. The next thing you're going to do is ensure that you expose yourself to the word, faith comment. So you have to build your faith by keep exposing yourself to that word. So what the word offers, let's look at the things the word offers. All right. All right, let's go. Now, Hebrews 4.12 says, for the word that God speaks is alive and full of power making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged word, penetrating to the divining line of all breath of life, soul, and immortal spirit, and of joint and marrow of the deepest part of our nature, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging every thought and purposes of the heart. I love this, AMPC. The word of God is sharper than two-edged sword. That's the summary. That's the other version you know. So you see that promise you have picked. Please, somebody should put in the in the in the chat box the link from from church. That promise you have picked, that thing you are praying about, that promise you have picked, it is powerful. It is important. It is efficient. It will penetrate. It will pierce through. It will expand. It will expose. It will see. It's a journey for the year. Now, if you're new here, the founder of Life Church, we're Bible believing church. That's how we've been raised. So one of the things we do every year, we pick a promise. We have promise for the week that we share in church. We have promise cards at the end of every service. You can just address, I personally, oh my God, when I'm in a season or I'm in a situation, it's almost like a practice. I'm always on that website picking promises, all right? So when we say promise for the year, it's like, okay, amongst everything I will pick this year, this promise is going to be an anchor scripture. It's going to be the anchor for my life this year. I have, it has been prayed over. I will believe that whatever you have been picking promises for years, and trust me, it has been one thing on the uh, on the heels of the other. Okay, so it's very important to know this. The effect of the word is that the word you pick works. It's going to penetrate, and I tell you, before the word heals, it would it would it would pierce. So the word of God, this promise you have picked is going to pierce you. It's going to expose you. But God is not exposed to shame. It's going to encourage you. It's going to strengthen you. In fact. You can use it to even predict certain things. Now, look at this. The impact of the word. God has transmitted, 2 Timothy 3.16. God has transmitted his very, his very substance into every scripture. For it is God's breath. It will empower you by his instruction and correction, giving you the strength to take the right decision and lead you to deeper and lead you deeper into the path of godliness. Then you'll be God's servant, fully matured and perfectly prepared to fulfill and my assignment, my assignment God gives you. Can somebody use the NLT to read this for me? NLT is so powerful. But look at all the things I highlighted. This promise that you have picked, if you steward it well and process it, you will find instructions there. It will correct you. It will give you strength. It will help you 
it will take the right de decisions, be on the path of the right direction. It will lead you into the path of godliness. At the end of the day, it's going to bring you to be able to fully be fit for what God is set to do this year. So who's going to read it for me? Second Timothy 3, 16. If you're still with me, put it, put in the chat box, box. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Awesome. Thank you so much. Let me see that. Okay. All right. I want somebody to read it. I want to hear someone's voice. Anybody? Okay. All right, go ahead. So it's, it's 2 Timothy 3, 16 says, All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Right. Thank you so much. If you go through that scripture, wow, it's to prepare you for every good work. Somebody, yeah, there's God has great things for you this year, but it's inched on how you are able to process what God is saying. So let's start. Let's go. Let's jump right into it. See what are your promises. But before we go there, can you put in the chat box anything you've learned from what I've said or anything that is like a reminder or something that just um, struck you or something I've said? Let's go. Let's learn as we go. You see, the beautiful thing about this is it is important. A lot of people pick scriptures. I was speaking to somebody yesterday and in this world where people are trying to help you interpret what God is saying, I mean, there's a place for that. I'll show you that even as you grow, no, but any word you receive, somebody maybe always have trusted and I guess, oh, I got this prophetic word. What do you think? This is what I perceive. People, trusted people to go through, also share with you, especially if it's on a source that you don't know the person, you respect them, you don't know them. But beyond that, you must be equipped. You must be equipped, guys, to take responsibility of your promises and prophecies. Do you understand? There was a time in my life, I didn't even know this thing existed. But as I kept on reading, I realized, oh my God. And that's why I know that the spirit of God can teach you things that you're not even aware is in the volume of books somewhere in the world. I'm like, oh my God. Every time I pick promises, I look at it. I begin to decipher what is the instruction in this promise? What is this saying? How can I see what it is? How can I process it? And I literally could find what will happen in my ear. I'm telling you. If I don't even have the full picture, it gives me, it prepares me. For two years, I picked <laughs> Matthew chapter 10, I think 29 to 31. Oh my God. You see, the first year I picked it, I'm like, oh. The second year I picked it, I'm like, what? Honestly, I was on the stage. I said, don't worry. Any promise you pick is from the Lord. And as I picked my promise, I said, hey, I, it came out of my mouth because it was just the same promise I picked last time. I'm like, which kind of thing is this? Like, God, is this carry over or what? I mean, I'm excited. I was waiting for, I'm going to conquer the, I'm going to do blah, blah, blah. I'm going to, I just saw, do not worry. I will take care of you. The best of you, you yell on your head. They are numbered. I mean, don't, 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 don't mind me. It was great. It's a great promise. But I'm like, hey, all this, I'll take care of you. Don't worry. M meaning that there might be reasons to worry, but do not worry. <laughs> you know, I just sat down with it, but, at the end of the year, I realized when I was analyzing, the Lord reminded me at crossover service this year. You may see you've been asking me a question about this particular area of your life, but what was my promise to you? I was invested and interested in you as a person, much more than what you can do for me. Oh my God. And that shifted me and reminded me of the importance of stewarding your promises and, and um, what's the word? Processing it. So let's jump right into it. Oh my God. This, I'm so sorry, this is not my habit. Normally, I'll, I won't give you everything like this, staring at me at the screen, on the screen. Oof, okay, so the first thing is this. You must cherish it. I'm sorry, please. My, the, 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 the perfectionist in me <laughs> is doing like this. He's saying, no, 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 no. Woman of God, this cannot slide because it's very distracting. You see everything at once. I'm so sorry, just give me a minute. Just a minute, I'll be done. Let me just add a bit of transition. All oh, right, thank you, Jesus. All right. Okay. Right, thank you. Just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. We're almost there. Somebody say you have a minute to. Thank you so much. I just want to ensure that we are okay. All right. Good, 
good, good. Sorry, I was doing this very last moment. All right, so let's get back to it. Uh, right, let's go. All right, so. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. So we're going to be looking at practical steps on how we can, yeah, much like it, how we can, you know, steward our promises. Number one, you must cherish it. If you look at the dictionary of steward, is choosing what is worth preserving. I'm paraphrasing now. Choosing what is worth preserving. So the first question, is your promise for the year, is the word of God worth preserving? Is the word of God worth preserving? If it's worth preserving, put in your chat box, worth preserving. Is the word of God worth preserving? If it is worth preserving, you will cherish it. The first thing you need to know about stewarding your promises is you must cherish it. You must cherish it. It must be golden to you. You are not going to let it go. You are going to fight keeping for it, keeping it rather. You're going to do everything in your power to ensure nothing is going to take the place of that word. All right. The next thing is embrace the Joshua 1, 8 and Philippians 4, 8 principle. Embrace the Joshua 1, 8 and Philippians 4, 8 principle, which is Joshua 1, 8. This book of the law must not depart. Cherish it. Meditate on it day and night. Create a routine. So that you'll be able to do what is right, obey what is in need, and have success. Philippians 4, 8, whatever thing is pure, whatever thing is good, think on this thing. So you're creating a structure where it's on your lips and you're thinking about it. It's on your lips and you're thinking about it. You must embrace the Joshua 1, 8 and Philippians 4, 8 principle. Write it out or record it. You can write it in a sticky note. You can put it on your phone. You can put it in your office. If you look at the book of Deuteronomy 11, 9, you see... The Lord was saying to them that they must not forget. They must put it on their doorpost, his promises, what he has done for them. Tell your children when you gather around. It has to be like a song. Record it. If some of you want to even make it your ringtone, if you want. If somebody following me this night, it's very important. The next thing is pray. Pray it and memorize it. Pray this scripture over and over again and memorize it. Memorize it. Remember all the Sunday school memory verse? Memorize it. All right? The next thing is create a confession out of it by adapting it. And I'll show you a sample. Create a confession out of it. You can, I'll show you an example. Create a confession out of your, your promise for the year. It's yours. That's part of cherishing it. It is yours. Do something with it. Create a confession out of it. And by adapting it to suit you. Create a culture of going through it with different translations. Pardon me. With different translations. All right. Create a culture of going through it with different translations. From time to time, go to U version. You know, how many of you know that on that when you are using your U version app, you once you I like anywhere, you see that drop down that shows there's a place called compare. Click on compare, it will show you a list of different scriptures. You can even add more, um, it will show you a list of different translations. You can even add more translation. You can go to Gateway on your browser or, or, or your yeah, your browser, put that scripture, it gives you more lists, almost like 20 or more. Create a culture of going through it with different translations. You can look for messages about its commentaries and read the context of that scripture. Look for messages. Message, go to, uh, man, guys, we have no reason not to be milking this world because when it, technology is God's mechanism to obtain more. Go on YouTube, message about Deuteronomy 1.8. Imagine that's your promise. You will still listen. If you don't know who they are, you have the spirit of God. We are speaking things that is going off because, because there's a lot of resources. Also, mean there are false resources. You can start from your pastor's messages on YouTube. Start with teachers you trust. Go on their YouTube page. Begin to look for resources about it. Start with the ones you know. Google. One person I really love reading how he's able to explain scriptures, Tony Evans, T.D. Jakes. Go to Pastor Taiwo's page. Go to CFO, the Hope Center, you know. There are a lot of practical teachings that we have on the church website. Um, go and um, Christine Kane, I love. Do you get, and a couple of other people that I might not have mentioned. Find those people. Bethel. Bethel has tons of things. You can go and check it and ask the Lord to lead you. Then check out commentaries. Do you know we have comment? Ah, you version. Check out Bible plan on that scripture. 
Do you know they have Bible plans in Google Efficient in U, U version? Bible plan efficient. Go to um, Bible plans, Bible plans, and click on efficiency. You will see options. So imagine you have a lot. Go to Gateway, go to a couple of places, even if you have to pay for certain buy books, go online, check books, you'll be shocked the things you will find. Is somebody following this and read the context of that scripture? So for instance, my promise of the year is Deuteronomy 28, 9 to 10. <laughs> I'm going somewhere. When I saw it, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Because the question I was asking of a fourth crossover, when I picked that promise, when I said I saw Bishop say, Oh my God, oh my God, so mushy God. Because like I'm gonna show you I love you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give the entire world for you. I'm gonna do this. And it's it's not like that, we have Bishop, anyways. By the time my own promise landed, I say, hi, 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 hi. But well, it's okay, it's okay. God knows how he loves us equally. So I knew what God was saying. I went to read the context of the scripture. Verses before, verses after, if you want. Chapter before, chapter after. Do you see that? A lot of us are saying, I don't know what to do. Eh, I don't know the word. If you, do, you have not done what you should do with the word. If we engage the word, in God gave you a mind for a reason. If you engage the word intelligently, strategically, systematically, and with all vigor and strength, I'm telling you, you will dig out gold. Somebody said this year, I will dig out gold. And lastly, research, study, and pray. Research, study, and pray. So let me ask you, which of these things stand out to you? Which of these things making sense to you? Which of these things is making sense to you? And by the grace of God, this is something we're going to do at feed this year. For those of you that don't know, this happens every Friday. It's how to practically live out the word. Our mission is no one will be left behind. It's propagating the gospel in a way that no one will be left behind in your sphere. So we are going to dig out gold this year by the grace of God. Amen. So let me take it off screen. Let me now see which one you know. All right. So tell me, then add your own steps. So tell me, which of it do you know? No, not this page. Which of the steps is sticking to you? Put it in the chat box. Which of the steps is sticking to you? Yes, cherish my promise. I love that. Cherish it. Pray and memorize it. Come on, come on. Let me see what you've got. Pray and memorize it. Anybody else? Research about it. Anybody else? Research, study, pray, memorize, look out for related meta commentaries. Create the culture of checking different translation, meditation, and confession. Awesome, awesome, awesome job. Guys, trust me, you have a lot. Now, this is an example of personalizing your promise. Personalizing your promise. Let's look at this scripture. It's an example. Deuteronomy 15, verse 6. Now, where I put all this highlight is not what is there. It's what I created. When the Lord your God blesses you, that's what he says. I changed it to when the Lord of God, you want, when the Lord of God blesses me. Or you have the I want, when the Lord of God blesses me, in this year, Lua, Ola, be, or when the Lord of God blesses me, as he promised me, then I, or then, in this year, Lua, Ola, be, will lend to many nations. For I, or in this year, Lua, Ola, be, shall not borrow. And in this year, Ola, be, shall rule over nations, but they shall not rule over me. So you see what I'm saying? You can adapt your promise. If you see my confession for baby, God will help me. I will go on it to some days. I, you, I can't even, one time I shared with somebody, I have to beg first because you will not even know the scripture anymore. I have personalized, adapted it because it's the word of God. I'm speaking over myself. So you can do this. So personalize it helps. So you can have the, so what you can do, our advice, have the real scripture. If you have a note, write the full scripture so that you don't forget. Only you can't do, you can preach. You're not going to preach your personalization. But that's what it means to take it, take ownership, right? Have the real scripture, then have your personalized one next to it. If you have it like, like me, I have a pen that has different colors, and I have it here. I have another one red. Even in my journal, the voice of God has a different color. You see, this Christian life, you can make it interesting. God's voice in my journal is a different color from my own voice because. Ah, we cannot be, uh, we need to know how to now. I even realized that because my journal is long. I need to have it. I'm, I'm, this year, I'm keeping a journal for just dreams, prophecies, and yeah, I think dreams and just separate from my journal. So my journal is just me chatting with God, my day, and some things I learned, blah, 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 whatever. But that was so that 
I, it's easy to find the dream because my journal, everything is just eating and all. Some of you want to use different colors. So personalize your promise. All right. How many of you want to explore this? Let me know in the, in the chat box. How many of you want to explore this? And see, there are still a lot of steps. There are still a lot of things that will still, still reveal to you. How many of you are looking, will look into personalizing your promise, personalizing your words, personalizing these things? It will bless you greatly. Trust me. All right. So let's go. I'm happy we're going, we're good with time so we can take questions. We have activation. Now, processing your promise. We have talked about stewarding your promise, processing your promise. There are two different things. Stewarding your promise is different from processing your promise. Okay? Stewarding it is keeping it of value of words, the process of getting it into you. All right? Processing your promise is the process of digging out gold from it. I'll take that again. I feel like God, if we can do this, and much more the Lord will reveal to us. I have friends that they will record this. They have all the details of every prophetic word. Major things in my life. I will go back to it. I will go. Stewarding is the process of, um, of, um, of preserving its worth. Processing is the process of digging out gold. Okay, so now let's look at it. Again, it's the process of digging out, dig deeper to find gold. So you have a lot of these boxes. These words are like these boxes. Great words, great words. Mm, mm, deep. It's more than what you have, mm, mm, deep. How do we then dig out gold from your promises and your prophecies? Now, a few steps. Now, years ago, I've been doing this for years. Then I I went to there's this guy called Dano Dano McCollum. He has I, I I heard him talk about this and I I'm like wow I will use this terminology to make it easy for you to understand. You see, I started doing this in years before I even realized that it existed anywhere. It was the Lord. I just started you would, and that's why you should read Bible. When you, this principle of um, processing the word is only for a promise. Even reading scripture, begin to read scripture with the mind to dig out gold. Because it's the glory of God to conceal a matter. It is the glory of kings to search it out. This is how we search it out. Now, let's look at practical steps. What are practical things that we can do to bring out great things from our promises, from, you know, from whatever the Lord has told us to do? So now let's get to work. Number one, look out for identity words. Are there words that talk about your identity? For example, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Look out for identity words. Now, can I say this? Some of the promises you pick, not all promises have all these steps. Some don't, have all, some don't have identity words. Like my promise didn't have identity words, all right? But every scripture, there's identity word in scripture. So you cannot look for identity word and own it, okay? I'm talking about for maybe you got a prophecy or you got a promise. Now, look out for ident identity words. Are there words that talk about your identity? Oh, you are precious to me. Like my, my husband's word is an identity word. You are precious or something like that. I, you know, look out for words that have identity words. Are you already thinking about your promise? The next thing, underline any promise God is making directly to you. For instance, I'll make you head and not tail. Are there direct, unconditional promises in that promise? So for instance, there's some direct words that it is on God. Now this processing helps you to focus on your own focus and let God be God. Because what happened, a lot of us pick promise because we don't know what to do with it. We just drop it. We don't we just leave it there. I expect God to do all the work. Or we are carrying it on our head like we're the only one that will do everything. Okay? So it helps you to know what is God's and what is yours. Now, make note of any requirements or condition on your part. For instance, explain like if you worship me and serve me, I will. If you do this, obey my commandment, I will. So the promise you pick this year, does it have conditions? Now, remember I said, the fact that you are doing this shows that you are already doing your part. Processing, don't say, ah, my own doesn't have conditions, so there's nothing I need to do. It's a lie, yo. All that one I said about stewarding, those are things you're doing. Reading in different translations, praying every day, creating a routine. Those are things you're doing, okay? So make note of any requirement or condition on your part. If you worship and serve me, I will. The next thing, mark any word that speaks about timing and season. For instance, by this time tomorrow, we may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Jeremiah 29 was cleared. I said, you'll be here for 70 years. Jeremiah 29 told them, do not believe what these people are telling you are coming out. He says, marry in Babylon. You'll be here for, imagine somebody's not going to be, 
That promise is here for 70 years. Now, it might not mean 70 years. It shows that there is a timing. God is speaking about timing. And for a lot of us, sometimes this promise has different feel because of God knows where we are and what is needed. For some of you, what you need now is not even maybe timing. You know there's timing. Maybe what, what you need is to know your condition that God is calling you to do. For some of you, God is really speaking about your identity. For some of you, is God is making promises to you. So you process those prophecies that way. Another one is make a list of any metaphor, of any metaphor or biblical references that you want to research into. For instance, if you pick a problem, I say, look at the ants, or as the walls around uh, um, Jerusalem, or as the cities around Jerusalem, or the scripture of "I am the vine, you are the branches." That's John fifteen. When you pick a promise that has a lot to do with metaphor. Or uh, look at the lilies of the field. God is asking you to go and study. So you want to research more. I remember one time I kept picking promises about pruning. John 15 was so strong in my heart. The Lord kept highlighting John 15. You know what I did? I went to I went on YouTube. I studied how do they prune the vine? Oh, mommy. It gave me context. I researched. The same God started speaking to me about harvest. Hey, my God. So when I said about vine, I realized that they will stick, the, they will cut it. So when God said any if any tree that any food any tree that produces, I prune it, I cut, I cut. I'm like, hey, yes, it's will, it will be uploaded on our YouTube. I cut it. I started seeing how they prune. So when God said, I'm pruning you, I'm having context. God is pruning not just excesses. Pruning is only for trees that produce. So if you read the scripture, it is that those that don't produce, I'll prune. He said, those that don't produce, I'll cut you off. Those that produce, I will prune. There's a reason why God will use that word. So when you pick a promise that has metaphor or biblical references, oh, you are Cyrus, oh, you are Nehemiah, you are something, you want to research into it. You want to, you will dig deeper into it. Notice how many times, another thing when you're processing your promise, notice how many times a word, idea, or, or, or theme is repeated. Determine the major and minor things with your prophetic word. For instance, Mark 11, 23. If you say to this person, and you do not doubt, if you say, you can count how many says are in Mark, Mark 11, 23. Anybody know it? Have you, has anybody really ate this Mark 11, 23? Let me see how many people are the. All right. How many people have read that mark eleven twenty three. god knows there are more than i'm sure there are more than two say he shows you that there's something about saying so if for instance you pick a promise i keep saying if you see if you see there's something about you seeing why is this important it begins to show you how you can dissect your word it's like a scientist you are dissecting it's like taking the microscope and putting it closer on your promise taking your responsibility trying to dig deeper to see what God is saying to you about your promise and about the year. Remember, the essence of this is to help you gain clearer perspective and accurate view to what God is saying to you. Okay? So do you want me to check it again so you can see everything? All right? Sorry, let's see everything. Look out for identity words. Underline any promise God is making directly to you. Some of those promises are not conditional. Sometimes you can have a promise that have conditional and unconditional, so it's fine. Make note of any requirements or conditions on your part. Mark any word that speaks about timing and season, okay? Um, look at words that are talking about metaphors or biblical references that you can research on, all right? Notice how many times a word or idea is repeated. All right, so that sometimes is showing you what is God emphasizing in your promise. If you are here, tell me, put in the chat box, what have you learned? Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm sorry, so a lot of people could not come in, come in because we are really poor. We don't want to make space for you by God's will next week because we're taking a step further again. So, all right, put in the chat box, someone, what have you picked from this? What's standing out? What's standing out? What's standing out? What's standing out? What's standing out for you? Anybody put in the chat box, does this resonate? Is this interesting? Has this impacted you? Has this impacted you? Is this practical to you? Is this helping somebody to see that when God gives you a word, you don't put it under your pillow. It's not enough to shout word. It's not enough to cry at the moment you pick the word. It's also for you to go over it on your promise. Sit on it. The practicality of processing your promise. Amen. All right, so now let's get to work. Let's get to work. <laughs> All right, let's see. What do you see? Let me see how many of you can get this. What do you see? Anybody 
is there an identity word in this scripture, in this promise? Is there any identity word? Is there any identity, a conditional word? Yes. Can you identify what, what is the what is the identity word? You know, I just saw something I've not seen in this promise since but I've seen it. What is the identity word? Anybody? Well, I don't know. No, no, no. Good. It's only people. Guess what? Is there repetition? I'll go, I'll take it. I'll start from the first, from the beginning. Is there repetition of, 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 of things? There is a repetition of holy people. So God is emphasizing his identity of holy people. No, you is not because um, that is subjective because it can just be a way, it could just be, oh, grandma, if you obey me and then you is people and all of those things. It's like saying, you see, I, 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 but hey, it could pass as well. But for me, I'll pick holy people as the identity word. Now, is there a promise, God's promise, is there any promise, direct promise God is making in this scripture? Can you put the direct promise? Anybody put the direct promise? Let's go, let's go. Because the next thing we're going to do after that is you, okay? Establish you as a holy people, okay? What's the next thing? They, all the nations we see, they will stand in awe, about three of it. They will see, they will stand in awe. I not say I will not leave the year. Is that I will not leave the year? They will stand in awe. Okay. Now, is there condition? What's the condition in this scripture? Is there a condition in this promise? Maybe another translation. So that's fine. Yeah. Another translation. Yes. What is the condition? If you obey my command and what? Walk in his way. So this promise has two conditions. You see, if you just obey my command, I actually, if you said obey my command, that should automatically means walk in his way. So I can actually obey his command and not walk in his ways. So that walk in his ways, I can use scripture to interpret scripture. He said, if you are willing and obedient, you eat the good of the land. So what is God speaking about walking in his way? I have to obey and walk in his way. Is there a repeated theme? We've said that that is the holy people. Is there anything about timing in this promise? Is there any timing or metaphor in this promise? Is there timing or metaphor in this promise? No. Good job, guys. So you see, you're ready to process yours. Good job. Now, look at this. If you obey, walk, or it's only people, then you are able to analyze it properly. Well done, guys. So now we're going to do yours. So it's time to practice. Now we are going to do yours. We're going to do yours. Okay. Who's ready? Who's ready? Who's ready? Who's ready? It's time to practice. So, to make this, we're going to practice. I think we should take questions, then we'll practice. Should we take questions and then we'll practice? So, to, so number one, everybody bring out your promise. Or quickly pick something from that place. So we're going to take questions first. We're going to take questions. We're going to take questions before we practice. So if you have a question, put it in the chat box. Or if you want to speak, raise your hand. We have to go straight to the point. If you have questions, raise your hand. If you have questions, raise your hand. Anybody raising their hand? Or you put it in the chat box. I have a question. If you pick a verse as a promise, do you have to read the entire chapter to note other identity words and met met metaphors? Well, that, because that promise is what is highlighted to you. But what I said about reading the entire is to know the context. It might help your understanding. But I would think I would advise for the process. You know, I said for stewarding to understand it better. You can read the entire chapter, chapters after, before, whatever as you want. But what you are really processing is that portion that was given to you. 
Let me give you an example. That my promise for that my promise for the year, the Jeremiah twenty eight. When I read it, I got a context that all more is a scripture of blessing and curses, hinged on obedience or disobedience. So it helped me to understand that whatever I'm processing in this my verse is not in isolation to the entire chapter. That might help you understand. Okay, well I know cases where people then like the verse before, like the verse after my own or more sweet. I was like, ah, ah, oh God, now fine. Now. If we just add this chapter 11 too. But I know that the entirety of it is not, is not a, what if your promise is a chapter, not a verse? Then you process everything. But if it's the promise to pick a fountain, it's usually a verse. However, the Lord gave you a, a chapter. Let me give you an instance. Um, at the beginning of the year, I was reading one of our uh, scriptures and the Lord gave me, I, I want, and you're fearfully and wonderfully made, was one of the scripture assigned that to be read. So when I went to that scripture, I used the TPT translation and the entire chapter ministered to me. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to make it a point of duty to just begin to read this. So I'm processing the entire chapter with God. So you can, you can. And I said that this process is not just for your promise. Even reading the Bible, even doing your devotion, you can take it as like God, I like a scripture. You wake up with a scripture. It can really be on your heart, okay? So, um, if I hope that answers your question, just an understanding, except the old chapter you have, or understand it, it might help you to have a better context, right? I picked Job 2, 23, 24. I put my Bible there, so what that I already marked the two verses before. So good. So, so good. That's good. Any other question? Any other question? Because I'm going to be playing music while we do this five minute process. And then we would, I would take samples and we'll go through it together how do you process a promise like job 32 8 there is a spirit in man the spiritual god might give him understanding there is a spirit in man how do you process it use use those parameters is there any identity word there's a spirit in man guys let's do this together job 32 8 is that all there's a spirit in man the spiritual god might give them understanding guys is there any identity word in this that's what i was saying that sometimes you might not have all of the parameters I said, and that's not the only way. Okay, but that's not a guide. Oh yeah, now where are my where are my people at? Is there any identity word in this? What is the identity word? What's the identity word? Man is spirit, absolutely. Man is a spirit being. So God is highlighting you are a spirit being. That scripture. Then next was the thing, the waiting, uh, the inspiration of the Almighty gives them understanding is that a promise is that a theme no condition absolutely there is no direct so this is more like an identity scripture and a promise i think there's a problem the, the inspiration of the almighty gives understanding is that a promise fantastic it's a direct promise so i hope that answer your question so if you open if you if you open your heart and just use those guidelines or anything else, every word, remember what I said in the book of um, um, Timothy that says that every word of God has been given as inspiration to correct. There's something in every scripture. Uh -huh. Thank you, Temilade. And then if you use other chances to blow it up. So that's very important. That's very important. No, it's a promise, actually. Because what it looks like is this. If you don't have the spirit of God, you don't have understanding. So that means in all you're getting, you must get understanding. So it's an indirect condition. That if you don't set it out, you might not um, um, understand. Or that exactly, you can also search, what does the inspiration of the Almighty mean? What are there messages on it? What is the context of that scripture? All right, so wonderful. That's a good one. Thank you. That's very good. That, that was a very good one. So that's an example of you might not see, you might not see a direct condition, but if you look at it well, uh -huh. so I think you're struggling to engage with the Holy Spirit. Fantastic. If you look at it well, he's saying that it's the spirit of the mind that gives understanding. There's a spirit in man. So that's a that's an idea. You're a spirit being. You cannot access understanding by the arm of flesh. All right. The inspiration of the Almighty is the Holy Spirit. Because I know that 
is part of my name. That scripture, I used to use it to say that that's my name, Miss Yolua, the breath. When someone says not breath like that, shall. anyways, shall. it's close to the meaning of my name. All right, any other question before we go into activation? Inika, stop laughing. I picked one some of to submit to, to me as I can, as soon as they hear me, they obey me. Okay. All right, anybody else? So that I want us to process it first before I start to, so that so now we're going to process it. I think there's no other question. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you a moment. I'm going to be playing a music, a, a song. I want you to bring out your promise and I'm going to take this person and then we would process all these great things. So I need you to do the work now based on all I've said. Somebody, can you type the steps for me? Is there, okay, let me just put that on the screen. Let me put that on the screen so that I can, oof, how do I do this? I want to play music and put something on the screen. La, 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 la. Okay, so maybe it's not music time, it's work time. So let me put it on the screen. This is the first part. Look for identity words. So pick out your promise, everybody. Look out for identity words. Don't just look at it to, if you don't just look for it to just say, you are my child alone. Is there, and look at it like that, there's a spirit in man. The way it came as an identity, man is spirit. On the life promises God is making directly to you. Are there promises that is being made directly to you? Make note of any requirement or condition on your part. Mark any word that speaks about timing and season. Well, again, that's your promise. Interesting. Look for metaphors, look for things. Are there repetition in the word? Are there certain things that are being repeated? Some of you are giving me your promise now. I want you to tell me what you have done. When you are ready, I'm going to give you two more minutes and then, or let me give you five more minutes. I'm going to play music now. Somebody can help me type in the chat box. Or if you remember, remember identity words. Is there a promise God is making to you? Are there conditions that are there? Is there timing there? Are there metaphors there? Are there things there? Are there conditions there? So I want you to look over all these things. As we get ready, we're gonna, I'm going to stop you in five minutes. So let me play music. Let me play music for you, DJ Missy on the beat. But I don't know, when the music distracts you, should I just chill with the screen instead of doing music? Will the music distract you instead? Or you want my music? Well, I'm going to put this on YouTube as well. It's very easy by God's grace. Before later tomorrow, this should be <laughs> <laughs> music is fine. No music. Wow. 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 How do I process this word now? Somebody help me. How do I process this word? Okay. No music, please. I want no music is winning. Really, no. So let me just go back to the screen so that we can focus on our work. Okay. Well, like, please don't distract me if I start hearing the, the song. I think that's my promise. Okay, so let's go. All right. Wow. Maybe that's your promise. Interesting. I yeah, begin to process it. Begin to process it. I'm only going to do one. I'm going to just randomly pick somebody and do this. I want to hear from you. The idea of this is to see you engage this as well. Is to see you engage this promise. You, you know, you can do this for your prophecies. This is actually for prophecies as well. Anytime you get a prophetic word, are there identity word in a prophecy? Is there condition in a prophecy? Is there timing in a prophecy? <laughs> yes, Bishop. But you know, the no says it all. You know, um, yeah, just pick out things basically. All right. Okay, let's keep going. Love you, Bishop. I just thought to say that it's part of my identity word. <laughs> so, guys, I'm just going to give you a few more minutes. Oh, wow, people are having some interesting. Interesting promises. Interesting. If you're ready, 
if you have yours, if you have done yours, just say right, done, done. If you're ready, if you've done yours, say done. So I could take you. All right. Dr. Oyin, do you want a on my way? All these people's promise. You know, hey, I cannot just be yeah, jealous in people's promise. I love it. Okay, so Dr. Oyin, can you unmute your mic? Are you in a place where you can speak? Do you want to talk, talk us through your, your promise? Okay, good evening, PI. Good um, evening. My promise is Psalm 37, verse um, 7. And um, it says, be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Mm. So um, there I, 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 well, I felt the, there was no identity. And um, the promise was it will act on my behalf. Mm. There was no timing. Mm -hmm. And the instruction is be still, but in other verses, it says be quiet and pray. Mm -hmm. And um, also wait patiently for him to act as an instruction. Then don't worry about um, people and their weakest scheme is like, don't worry and be content. That's the way I understood it. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot and there's the presence in the presence. So you are not just, it's not just about waiting and still. There's something about the presence of okay. God. Okay. Bringing the act on. Well done. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Good job. I agree with you. I agree. You did a good job. Anybody else? Thank you. Anybody want to go? Why, Amy, do you want to go? Foye, Foye, let me hear you. Then I'll come to Moji. <laughs> I can hear Moji screaming. I'm getting caught. All right, Foye, let me hear you. Yeah, so my promise was Genesis ah, 26. You have to speak clearly so we can hear you. Uh, Sorry, you can't hear me now. Yeah, it's okay. Go ahead. Genesis 22, 17 to 18. It says, um, I will certainly bless you. I will multiply your descendants beyond number, like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will conquer the cities of their enemies, and through your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed, all because you have obeyed me. So, um, at first, um, at first, at first glance, there were no direct identity words. There are promises that God is making directly to me concerning my descendants, and all these promises are saying God. God is saying that He personally He will see to it that this is done. Then. There were metaphors that I need to research for that, such as um, like the stars in the sky and the sand or the seashores the, to explain how the multiplication of my descendants shall be. And also there was repetition of the word descendants and I will. So like there's emphasis on the fact that this promise is for you, but also for your descendants. And there was no timing as well. Yes. Right. Right. But if we look at the issue of descendants, so that means it's a generational thing. So it's going to be continuous. And then I think the issue is there's a there's confidence <laughs> yeah. that you obey. Is that because you have obeyed me? That's in past tense. Did you notice that for you? Yes, I did. And it, it, when I saw it, I first of all, like, I was like, are you sure that you're talking so that's, about that's me? Kind of a, that's kind of a thing. Guys, can, like, can, that, can, that's fast when I get to the word. God says yeah. you're obedient. Um, Remember that at the end of the day, when God speaks to us, he's not speaking to us based on the condition of where we are. He's mm -hmm. calling gold out of us. Yeah, okay. Gold out of us. So... That is a very good word. I hope you are able to that, take that. So that means you have to also just in something. Yeah, go ahead, Bishop. Yeah, I think that also just talks about your marital destiny. Sometimes we try to look for this spookiness mm. of words. This also says that if you are going to have descendants, you you get married. You have Come kids. On. You know, sometimes you look at these words and some these are ways that God also uses to comfort you. Like, God is already talking about your children's children's children. And mm. you're like, God, when would the guy come? When would this guy like, 
I'm done past that. Like <laughs> we are talking about future right now. So I just thought to just chip in that <laughs> for someone. Yeah. Wow, this is so good. This is so good. Thank you so much, Pio. I like that's it, Pio. Mm. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? That's it, though. Oh, yeah, Ginika. I'm sorry. Ah, don't let Moji. Moji, you're next. Moji, you're next. Good evening, everyone. Um, so my promise is first Peter 5, 6 to 7. Okay. Um, and it says, um, so humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. And at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries mm. and cares to God for he cares about you. Um, so um, there's no identity word here, um, but there are two promises. And the first promise is that at the right time, he will lift me up in honor. And the second promise is that he cares about me but it comes with instructions mm. which is um i am to humble myself under the mighty power of god <laughs> i am also supposed to give all my worries and cares to god um so yeah that's it's pretty straightforward for me so interesting well done well done um okay. Inika. okay so my Promise. Sound like someone has been waiting. I say, Auntie, I, Auntie, I. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, Philippians four nineteen. So, um, from TPT says, I am convinced that my God will will fully satisfy every need I have, for I have seen the abundant riches of glory revealed to me through Jesus Christ. So that alone was a starting point. Just thinking about this, it says fully, fully satisfy. Nothing will remain everything will be complete. And so when I will talk about what I did before this and what I did with what you've shared with us. So as I researching on it and I checked what needs meant, needs are necessities. And then I went to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And then I was like, yo, everything you need is there. But when on, I said, no. you took it, ah, Love it. Yeah, Go ahead. I just scattered my head. The Maslow hierarchy of needs tells you from psychologically as basic as food, water, you know, um, clothing, then the safety needs, security, employment, morality, family, and then there's love and belonging, friendship, sex, intimacy, family, yeah. um, esteem, yeah, self-esteem. Yeah. Every single thing. At the end of the day, this week I was, I'm going to be open here. I don't know. I was very, and um, please pardon me if you are below 18. I was very horny. And I told God, my God will supply all my needs, Come my on, sexual man. needs. I told Mojina after I said, Moji, the way I slept off, I didn't even know who, who I was not tired. So as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> I can say, that is, <laughs> no, me, no, I, I, yeah. <laughs> It was, it is what it is for me. And then I um, checked the opposite of needs are wants. And when he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So I started strong, um, searching um, Psalm 23 verse 1. Anthony Evans also preached on it. That was what I shared with the women's group. Too. It was another level. And then I now saw that Matthew chapter 6 verse 27 to, it now tells you that, why do you worry? You know, if you're, so I just broke it down. There are different levels to it. I'm still going through it. But when you now talked about identity promise, I saw that there was an identity there that I had not noticed. It says mm. that I have access to his riches. Now in that translation, it says you have, um, he shall supply all your needs according to the access you have in his riches in glory. Come on. Mm. Also, mm -hmm. it just tells me that I have access to his riches in glory, but it's in Christ Jesus. You know, it's not any random person, Guru Maharaj, is in Christ Jesus. So that's, <laughs> and then it's, for me, I think it's a direct promise. <laughs> it's yes, a direct it promise. <laughs> and the timing for me, I, it's not timing in sense of duration. It was the, um, all my needs, all, I, I put it on oh. that time, everything, you know. So um, in terms of the condition, I think that's where I'll get to when I expand it, especially from Matthew chapter six, where it tells you, you then focus on your intimacy with God and every other thing. I don't worry. Yeah, if you use scripture to come, if you use scripture to explain scripture, okay. not worrying now becomes the thing. But based on that scripture, 
Man, you know, how many of you, giddy guys that got those children that they will give them exam, they will ask for extra seats for OBJ. It is OBJ. They're not supposed to paint. Shade, yes. shade, shade. Just shade. Somebody say, Uncle, I, I need extra seats. Extra seats. Sheet. For OBJ. But man, guys, I am blown. I love it. Look at how processing your promise is coming to life. She was on it. And can we talk about that a bit? <clears throat> it's really low. It seems that it's happening. Hello. So she was on it. And it was not just a no. Shalaba, shalaba. It, it came from a place of understanding. So if you are here, mm. you're seeing your body is moving. You, you know, there's no personal revelation. You can tap that Come scripture on. when you are gone. And say, hey, what auntie talk say, supply my need. I love it. That anarchy of need. But hey, even me, I've lambano it. So good. So good. Bishop, what so good. Me? No, I, I was just blown. I was just blown. I was Someone just blown. Said, God this year. That's it, though, Mayam. God, when God is done, when we are done this year, God say, ah, ah, you not squeeze this promise. You, you just need nation. Need nation. <laughs> Lambano nation. You don't need yeah. anything out. Okay. Uh, because of time, let me, take one, okay. let me take one more person and then we would wrap up tonight. You get the gist. I want to, if there's anybody finding difficulty, processing theirs let the person just send yeah me, yeah just send a message here that would that would um um what's it called yeah that's what we want to do with feed this day guys even the bible study take scripture and break it down someone say lambano mm. nation that's it yeah yeah that's lambano it. I'm, nation. I'm, I'm, I'm putting this on a shirt Aka, please let's do it lambano nation lambano nation like, nation, lambano nation. like what we're taking it Okay, Amaka, share your promise with me. Good evening, P.I. Good evening, Pastor Lumide. Good evening, okay, so my, prom uh, my promise is um, 2 Chronicles 8, verse 9. And it says that, um, <clears throat> for you have known the grace of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he, be he became, became poor, poor. Ah. so that you... So that you through his poverty might become rich. Okay. Yes. So that's it. Second with me. Second Chronicles eight verse nine. Is it Chronicles or Corinthians? Sorry, Second Corinthians eight verse nine. Sorry. Okay, that's good. Second Chronicles Corinthians eight verse nine. Okay. Now number one. So let's, guys, let's look at this promise. Somebody can put in the chat box. Let's look at this promise together. You can use different translations to help me drop it in. Somebody can put CPT. I'm putting NLT now. And then we're going to take it. It's <laughs> always working by <laughs> And they try small, small. Go to help me. All right. Um, you know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I feel like there's a condition of knowing. Oh. Anybody? There's also identity. For a sake, though it was rich, for a sake it became but so that it's probably you can be rich. So there's an identity that God calls you rich. All right. So for me, what I'm picking here is number one. Anybody else? Let's look at this promise. Number one thing here is that there's a condition of knowing. There's a condition of knowing, knowing, um, knowing the generous grace of God, knowing what Christ did. Though he was rich for your sake, he became poor. If you want to understand what does that mean? I search in scripture, through scripture. What are the what, what does that mean? A scripture that's coming to my mind was that when he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me to do, 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 that anointing to you know break, set the captive free. He became poor so that you you so that by his poverty you could be rich. God is talking about riches here. I don't want to now, like Guinea. You can go and Google what is riches. There was a message Bishop uh -huh. about okay. wealth. That Bishop talked about mental wealth, a, a psychological wealth. Uh, so you can also translate it to that. Bishop, go ahead. Yeah, I just saw this up and as she was saying, you know, I just felt led to Google it. And I, I think I came up with something really nice. 
that maybe expands it a bit more. It says, in this section, Paul urges the Corinthians to follow through on a previous commitment to give money to meet the needs of suffering Christians in Jerusalem. He yeah. made clear in his previous verse that this is not a command. It is an opportunity to express the love of Christ to other believers. So I feel that that knowledge that Pierre was talking about is a knowledge of the acts of God. Like you know the grace of God. You know that even you, you are a product of grace. So pay it forward, give it forward. So that's the first thing. In that says now it describes how it describes right. how contributing to this gift is Christ-like. Jesus was rich and secure in the glory of heaven. He willingly became poor when he became a man, oh. entering into the world of suffering and death in the flow of time on earth. He did this in order to die for the sins of humanity so that all who trust in him can be given can be forgiven of their sins and one day experience the wealth and security of living in glory with God. In other words, Jesus demonstrated God's grace by willingly becoming poor to the, so the Corinthian Christians could become rich forever. Now the Corinthians have the opportunity to perform an act of grace themselves that would follow the examples of Jesus' own sacrifice. This is evangelism. This is so wow. Yeah. Because actually, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, chapter 9, was a, is at chapters where Paul was talking about giving. It was in chapter 9 that he said that, in, I think it was that chapter 8 that says, nobody should muscle you up to give. You should mm. give cheerfully, press down, all those things is in those chapters. So because apparently the Corinthians made commitment to give and they were going to retract on some of them when also it was reminding them, in fact, Paul sent somebody to go and collect all the money, was raising money like, oh yeah, go and collect the money that you have decided to give to help other people. So I think like Bishop has said, so God is speaking about your identity, about riches, but he's also saying that that riches is onto something. That yeah. riches is for a purpose. Now, the knowledge is this. So like Bishop, number one, knowledge that no, you need a knowing of what Christ has done. And what Christ has done, how does it impact your doings? So if Christ became poor, so that can be rich, your riches cannot be just for you. So through so your good. own sacrifice as well, other people can become rich. So if you look at this scripture based on the context, you can see the instructions therein. Do you understand? The instructions therein. So I would say that number one, is there's an identity that you are rich. So I think that if Paul is telling them that you are rich, so he's telling them, there's no need to do akagon to give this money. There's no need to give sparingly because that was where the scripture was not talking about. Those that give sparingly will receive sparingly and all of those things. The next, I think is that chapter seven or chapter nine or even the eight itself. So what was saying like, ah, yes, it relates to kingdom financing. So that was what, that was what, that was the purpose of that. They were raising money. They, yeah. were, they, they were redeeming their pledges. So in between that, so you see why I said it's important to read the context. Sometimes even the next chapter or the chapter before it, an entire chapter so i love what bishop yeah. brought out if jesus became poor so that we can enjoy his generosity so there's a place of you might deny yourself it might look like denying yourself but you're all actually mm. enriching others so you are paying it forward mm. so i don't know if this makes sense to you there's an identity there there is the issue of god saying there's knowledge so i feel like indirectly bishop there might be a condition of if you don't get the knowledge you might not understand mm. the identity mm. Mm. It's just subtle. It's not right there in the front, but the knowledge of what Christ has done, that you are, what Christ has done, then made you rich. It's not going to, it's not about to make you rich. He has made you rich. God, God is not going to come and die again. He's not going to come and be poor. Again. So he, he's already been poor that you may be rich. So riches yeah. is what you You have that. So whether your bank account, so let me give an example of how, one of the things I need everywhere, you can call prayer points from your promises. Like, for instance, I'm already praying myself into obedience. Like, I obey every instruction. So I've been asking the Lord, Lord, I see the instruction. I know in the instruction. For you now, you're going to be praying. You can open your account. account. I say, account, because of what Christ has done, for my sake, it became poor that I'm a rich. I'm rich. You be full of riches. My business bringing the riches. My association. Why? Because there's a purpose for these riches. Because based on the knowledge, this is how you pray scripture-based prayers. Yeah. Based on the knowledge of what Christ has done, I am also partnering with God. I am rich, so I will empower people as well. I, because if you are going to make people rich, that means you are going to overlook. Every time 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Every time you give or do kingdom financing, there's opportunity for gone that has happened. Yes. Opportunity for gone has happened. You have it's either artificial. denied something, you, you have declined something, or you have depleted something. So even if you are not going to buy anything, if you had $2,000, you have removed $500 for God. That money is not $2,000. Is that $1,500? According to Naira and Kobo. But in the kingdom, there's credit for you. Because, mm -hmm. see, can I tell you Amaka, go and read First Corinthians chapter 9. The next chapter then talks about how Paul said, because of you, people are making praises unto God because God. of your generosity. Is that Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, that talks about lacking nothing, I am self-sufficient, having more than enough, lacking no aid, and I feel is a very packed promise. I hope everybody is blessed. So when you sit down with your promise, like what Bishop did, he Googled it, he checked something, he started explaining based on his understanding and riches also, guys, even if you want to look at this, if you look at riches, let me even check, let me really check something, dictionary meaning. I know that there's times when they talk about riches. You can even look at this. In fact, in fact if, you, if you even look at it, you see that God was even transcending beyond wealth. You know, the Bible's talked about a place where he says, um, do not stop your riches. Do not stop your riches where moth and, and, and death and decay, but store up your riches in heaven. So he's saying that there are riches on earth and there are, the rich, there are things that heaven considers as riches that don't be so fixated on the heavenly riches. So I can tell you now that part of the riches God is saying that he wants you to dispense to your world can be you giving hope. It's not financial, but it's hope. Mm -hmm. In a world where people are constantly speaking negativity, you... Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, see what the Bible says. It says that you that have been a product of grace, meaning, Amaka, there is something about your salvation story that was a pivotal thing about what God did for you, whether he brought you out from penury, he brought you out from a bad, you know, uh, 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 maybe a bad life, you were, you, were, you were chaotic or whatever, or you used to be suicidal, or you used to have many sick thoughts or very, very, you know, weak, low self-esteem. That is the work of grace that God has brought you out from. Now he's saying to you that now that you know that this that you have received is a work of grace, you have the empowerment to deliver other people that may be in this same stead out of it. So if it is financial riches, it is the fact that, oh, you were poor, now you are being made rich. But God is saying that, see, when you lack low self-esteem, I lack so, low self-esteem so that you can have high, high self-esteem. And because you have high self-esteem, deliver somebody that has low self-esteem. Because on. I am in you. Come on, that is that's so good. That is riches. That's so good. That's so good. Bishop, remember that scripture that also talked about that the Lord will supply your needs according to the riches in glory. So there are glory. riches in glory. Thank you. It's there not limited to finances. finances. And it's not check, limited. If you check dictionary, they will tell you that when you talk about riches, it's not just material. It's a valuable possession. Yes. So guess what? Grace is a valuable possession. I'm 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 a possession. Peace of, mind. Hey. Peace of mind is a valuable possession. Mental stability is a contentment is a valuable possession. So Jesus has done all that so that you can have these valuable possessions. And in having these valuable possessions, you can help other people have valuable possessions because it, it never stops with you. Yes. Never. You are wow. blessed to be a blessing. This is so good. I think we're going to do this again. We're going to look at people's promises again next week and just go one because I'm even encouraged as we're reading. See, that's the thing. As you expound on scripture, it, it gives you strength. It, it builds you up. Let, as we wrap up, and Bishop will pray for us now. Can I say something to you guys? There is no... See, if you are sick and they rush you to the hospital, if, if someone is short of oxygen and they rush you to the hospital, they will never give you nitrogen because yeah. you say... Oxygen is not working. Is it that same oxygen that you have been taking in that is short that will give you? What am I saying? Yeah. Because you are using the word and you say, ah, the word is not working. When you go to God in prayer, what will you refer you back to? The same the word. word. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same word. It's the same word. It's not going to give you anything else. Why? The word cannot, it can't break itself. Two immutable things. His promise the, he can, his name rather and his word he cannot you know, Dr. Emisio, he cannot wait Abby Dr. Uh, Uyime and uh, Dr. Umore 
If they rush somebody to hospital, they say, no oxygen, no oxygen. They just say, ah, ah, that means oxygen is not working. Put nitrogen, mm. put something else. It will destroy you or put carbon dioxide or whatever. They have to, right, doctor? Am I correct? You're correct, ma. Exactly. <laughs> so the same thing with the word. I want to tell you whether you have been praying, you have been sabasi. You see, my life is not changing. Mm. It's the word. It's the word. Can you see that a lot of you have not been reading the word? Look at how we are dissecting the word. And it's not because we are pastors. We did not think about it before we came. It's a case of mm. as you open it. And that's why for us as a church, in the cells, in the department, and even for feet. As you open that word, be reading it. This is how you study. That's how I read scripture. I will go to dictionary. I see a word. What does it mean? Uh, uh, grafted. What does grafted mean? I go on YouTube. See, you have been grafted into Christ Jesus. What does grafted mm. into Christ Jesus mean? I look at YouTube grafted. Ha! Ah, that's how they are joining me to Jesus. It, it changes how you understand scripture. So it's the word that will do it. And I'm just thankful to God for the opportunity to share with us. I'm going to continue next week. Please tell your friends. The recording will be made available for you by God's grace tomorrow. Just go to our YouTube page, subscribe on our YouTube page, put on the notification bell. So as soon as it's uploaded, you would find it available to you. Over to you. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just want to say, Father Lord, thank you for this. Of a fact, your word says the unfolding of your word gave it light and it gives understanding to the simple. We thank you for expounding our hearts with the light of your word. And now we decree that in the name of Jesus, this word goes into every dark cranny of our hearts and it starts to light it off for, for your good in the name of Jesus. We ask, oh God, Lord, today that we become stewards of your promises and we become excited to protecting this great treasure that we've received today i pray for those that have been under any form of bondage today the word of god liberates you from every attack of the enemy anyone that has been in a space that it feels like as if you have been cocooned or you have been boxed i decree by the reason of the word break out now in the name of jesus i decree that the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit which actually helps in the interpretation of the word of god will start to guide our hearts and mind as we read the word in the name of jesus and okay. lastly i decree over everyone joy inexplicable full of glory as you imbibe and as you cultivate time with the word, you would burst into new levels of joy. Not the joy that comes when you receive physical acquisitions, but the joy that comes from the true nourishment of your soul. I decree that over everyone here in the name of Jesus. I pray for anyone that is in a space of condemnation where you're, the enemy has been condemning you. I cast that word that the enemy is saying to put you down. I say for there is therefore now no more condemnation for those that are in Christ. Rise up son and daughter in the knowledge of God that you are and be undefeatable. I decree in the name of Jesus that the Egyptians that you've seen before you shall see no more forever in the name of Jesus. Arise and shine for thy light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It is well with your spirit, soul and body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.